Welcome back to Cheddar Business, everyone. Well, it has officially been a year since Marriott Vacations Worldwide officially acquired ILG, a provider of vacation experiences. Joining us now is Steve Wise. He's the president and CEO of Marriott Vacations Worldwide. Uh, Steve, it's good to have you with us. Give us an overview of what this past year um, has brought after this acquisition and, and how the company is moving forward since. Well, um, it's, uh, it's been a little busy, um, kind of like the, the dog that caught the car, now what do you do with it? Um, it's been great, uh, as we, we roughly doubled the size of our business as a result of this acquisition. Uh, and uh, as we've integrated four new brands, uh, an exchange company, a third-party management company, uh, it, it's been uh, trying to figure out how to put all those pieces together in the best fashion possible, uh, create some uh, synergies along the way, uh, and put new systems in place and all of that. So we've, we've had our hands full, but it's been, it's been fun. Uh, Steve, we're down here on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange. The Dow right now uh, down 146 points. Today is day three of uh, seeing triple-digit losses right. on the Dow. Um, this type of economic uncertainty uh, seeming to reel its head right now. How are you thinking about the health of the economy for the remainder of the year and then also as you plan out 2020? I, I, I guess the hope is that this is more of a transient kind of uh, activity than a, than a trend. Uh, although clearly the last couple of days have been disappointing. Um, as far as our business is concerned, I mean, the good news is we're in the business of putting people on vacation. That's the one thing that doesn't change is that everybody still wants to go on vacation. Even they want to, but... It, believe it or not, even in a recession, even in the, in the Great Recession, people were going on vacation when they were being foreclosed on in their house. It was rather incredible from my perspective. Uh, I don't think of it that way, but a lot of people do. But uh, the reality is that um, it, the one thing that there is a correlation between consumer confidence and what we call a closing rate in the timeshare business, which is if you talk to 100 people, what percentage of them buy. Uh, so as consumer confidence, if it takes a, pr a, a pronounced dip for a long period of time, it will have some effect on the business. But we're hopeful that this, again, is something that's more short-lived and will come back very quickly. You mentioned uh, synergies has been part of this transition, right, since right. the acquisition. Uh, what are those synergies, and have you already realized them at your company? Yeah, when we first announced the transaction, which was April 30th of 18, we estimated we'd get about $75 million worth of synergies. In our second quarter call this year, we upped it to at least $100 million. Um, we're on a run rate that by the end of this year will be at $60 million of that, and that's by the end of 21. Uh, so uh, we have every reason to believe that uh, we'll not only make the $100 million number, but exceed it. And uh, we're, you know, a lot of things are very logical in terms of you don't need two CEOs, you don't need two CFOs and all that. Uh, but and the reality is that uh, we've, we've made some great progress and uh, we're very optimistic. Steve, a couple of weeks ago I was at the Skift Global Forum, which is yep. essentially the, uh, these days, the travel industry conference right. to go to. And the theme of this year's conference was the greening of the travel industry and right. how leaders like you are thinking about sustainability, uh, yep. not only in terms of marketing, but of course also in, in right. making your businesses greener. Sure. How are you guys doing that? Well, we've, we've been, we, we like to think we've been fairly proactive in that area for quite some time. Uh, obviously, the traditional things of recycling and the like, uh, we're continuing to work with our former parent, Marriott International, in terms of all of its initiatives, in terms of uh, getting rid of single-use plastics, uh, making sure that the bathroom amenities we move to bulk and all the other things. There's all sorts of other things in terms of energy sustainability uh, that we're, we're, I think we've been fairly proactive on. And uh, we get some pretty good marks for what we've done. Uh, but there's always more to do. Uh, I think the, I mean, we all have a responsibility to try to make sure that we're doing the best we can, that can to take care of Mother Earth, and uh, we'll continue to move forward in that direction. How do you compete against Airbnb? Um, it's a question we get asked a lot. Uh, Airbnb has is is done a great job of, I think, um, bringing to market uh, a business that's been around for a very long time. People have been renting their apartments or their rooms in their places for a long time. They've just find, found a good way to, to digitize it and make it available to the public. The great news about our business is that our, our villas are generally much larger, uh, average of 1,000 to 1,200 square feet, a couple of bedrooms, living room, dining room, kitchen, in a fully amenitized resort. One of the things you'll find in Airbnb is you might be able to find a two-bedroom apartment but you generally don't have the amenities that go along with it. Plus the professional management that we bring to the party. We believe that uh, while I won't say there's no impact, I think the impact to the industry and us in particular has been fairly minimal. 
Steve, what are we looking for, uh, millennials looking for, in terms of a vacation experience different from our parents or, 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 sure. or Gen X? Flexibility, diversity of experiences. Um, you don't want to go to the same place every year. Um, when I say you, I mean I'm, in millennials. The collective you. I... Uh, and by the way, that's not really a, a millennial phenomenon. It's more evidenced in the millennials. But even our own kind of legacy owners uh, have, have told us over, over the years that they want to be able to go to different places, have different experiences. If you want to stay at one of our resorts this year, that's great. If you want to go take a cruise, that's great. If you want to go on an adventure travel someplace, you want to take a wine tour in Tuscany, we can do all of that through our Marriott Vacation Club Destinations Program. And uh, we think that fits very well with what people are looking for. Where does the growth come from uh, from here? Is it, is it more locations? Is it more experiences? Yeah. What, what helps grow that top line for you? Yes to both. Uh, because they have a tendency to be somewhat correlated. Uh, clearly, as we add new destinations, we add a new sales distribution center, and as a result of all that, uh, we get new sales growth for, in markets we haven't been before. But one of the things people like when they come and talk to us about deciding whether or not they want to become an owner with us is the diversity of the experience level. I mean, we have 10,000 different vacation experiences that people can enjoy with us when they're one of our owners. Uh, and we only have 110 resorts. So that'll tell you about the diversity of the kinds of things that we offer. And uh, we think that that's really what people are looking for and that's why people want to continue to find a buy. And interestingly enough, better than 50% of our sales every single year are to our existing owners that want to buy more. Okay. Steve Wise, the President and CEO of Marriott Vacations Worldwide, thanks so much for joining us on Chatter Day. It's great to see you. Thanks for having me, I appreciate it.